Hi, everybody. I'm Alan Ann with Center Stage Magazine, and I am so excited to be talking on the phone here with Mickey Dolan. Hi, Mickey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very excited uh, to be talking to you. This is great. Thank you so much for taking the time. No problem. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. you. you um, I can't wait to see you on uh, the 19th in Tempe. Um, looking yep. very forward to that concert. Yep, I am too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do want to say, first of all, Shrek's got nothing on you, okay? The no what? Offense, Shrek. No offense <laughs> to Shrek, but he's got nothing on you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. Awesome. Okay. So, um, I just want to touch on the monkeys just for a little bit first, mm -hmm. okay? So last year when Good Times came out, um, it quickly rose to the top ten you know, into the top 10 bestsellers, and you went on tour with uh, Peter, and in some instances, Mike was there too. How was that experience for you? You had a new CD, a new tour. Were you surprised by the popularity and, and the love you received from the audience after so many years? Well, it's, it, it's amazing. I mean, you know, I've always felt blessed having been part of the monkeys, and over the years, the decades now, well, it's always been, whenever we have got back together, um, it's always been very successful. But uh, as you say, having good times shoot up the charts like that, it's just unheard of for a group that's 50 years old. In fact, I was, I was thinking at the time, the equivalent would have been in 1966 when we came out, of course, and the Beatles were there and the Stones and everybody. The equivalent would have been an act getting a top 10 album from the year 1916, you know, <laughs> during the First World War. It would have been like it would have been like Al Jolson or Enrico Caruso uh, getting a top 10 uh, album and, and and tour. So yeah, I feel I just feel blessed. You know, we had some wonderful, wonderful people involved producers and musicians and writers and and uh you know and of course the 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 three of us and even david was represented with a track that he'd done back in the 60s so mm -hmm. and we're still writing uh, high on that album i do uh, a number of songs from that album in in my solo show too which uh you'll see in tempe Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I love the fact, and I'm sure most of the fans did too, that you did include Davey in um, Good Times you, with clips and um, the little cartoon for She Made Me Laugh, She Makes Me Laugh. Yeah. You know, he was included. And, and I think, I, I mean, I think that's wonderful. And, and I know that there were tears, and I know people around me were like, oh, Davey's there. Yeah. So, he, yeah, it was it was a big loss, you know. Um, you know, to be honest, uh, he was like a brother to me, and and it was a uh, it was a big loss. But uh, you know, time marches on. Exactly, exactly. It really does, and that was that was um, just so exciting when that came out. And um, your sister Coco. Okay, the first time I saw Coco appear with you guys was um, a few years ago. It, you did a July 4th show at Ak Chin Harris Casino in yep. Maricopa County, and Coco did a fantastic version of Different Drum. I was just blown away. Oh, well, she's an incredible singer. She's just wonderful. She does all of my shows with me. She'll be in Tempe with me, of course. Awesome. She's here in San Francisco right now. We're just going into rehearsals in a few minutes for a cabaret show that I, I do occasionally. I did it in New York, and I'm doing it here in, in San Francisco at Feinstein's at the Nico. Um, and she's singing that with me, and she's uh, wonderful. She sang on some of the original Monkey Records doing backgrounds, and so um, I've always had her with me uh, singing, and uh, she's, she's a great, wonderful singer. <laughs> I was wonder, I'm wondering if she was part of um, any of the original hits. Yeah, she was just amazing. So the show show this weekend in San Francisco, it's um, based on your, your latest album, a little bit Broadway, a little bit rock and roll, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, I know you have a passion for you know, acting and for Broadway, and you appeared in several 
you know, shows, including Grease and Comedy yeah. is Hard, yep. um, Hairspray in the United Kingdom. You know, are you looking to go back on Broadway? Do you have anything? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, well, over the, the years, I've, I've been up for, uh, you know, a number of different shows. I got quite a few different shows. And then I've been up for some I didn't get. <clears throat> and, uh, and, I all, and there's also been instances when I was offered things, but I couldn't do it because I was uh, already committed to something else, usually a monkey tour or stuff like that. But yes, I have every intention of going back and doing more musicals if somebody will ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe someone will ask. They'd be a fool not to. <laughs> um, and do you, um, so you're doing two shows in San Francisco this weekend, correct? Yep. Tonight and tomorrow night. Yep. At, at wow. Feinstein's uh, at, at the Nico. I love San Francisco, beautiful city. So on top of everything else that you do, you run Dolan's and Daughters with your daughter, Georgia. Yeah, fine furniture. <laughs> I, I think uh, it's a completely different, you know, aspect to your life. Um, I've, I've seen, you know, posts on Facebook and things like that. Um, how are you involved with that other than the fact that she's your daughter? I mean, furniture? Well, it's it, it's, uh, it's 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 uh, a, a bit of a long story, but I'll try to make it short. I've always had a woodworking shop wherever I lived all my life. Um, I've never made a big deal of it. I've never publicized or made it a business. It's always been just for my own self gratification. But I've always been uh, into building things and having tools, and and uh, you know I've got pretty good at it, frankly. Uh, starting from my father, you know that's what he used to do. Um, in build things in the garage and um over the years i learned how to you know get better and better and um and I have a shop now, a big one, a woodworking shop. In Georgia, my daughter went to theater uh, school, uh, uh, university in England, doing a theater degree. And in that, you learn how to use tools and build sets and design sets and, and all that. So she got very good at it and very handy with building and designing stuff. And one day we were in my shop building a coffee table for a friend of hers. And I jokingly said, we should start a business, Dolan's and Daughters Fine for furniture and she just ran with it when like within a week we had a website and a business license and a shopping card and a credit card and a pay, oh, paypal like account it. and we just put, put it up put the shopping cart up one day and got so many orders we were uh you know we were just so busy for months and months and <clears throat> finally she had to post on the uh, website we couldn't take any more orders because daddy's on tour <laughs> so <laughs> that's like a dream come true for any oh it's wonderful that's one of the most wonderful things i've done in <laughs> fact when i leave here uh, uh uh on sunday i go back and get right into the shop with georgia that's much. So is that kind of what you do when you're downtime, when you're not touring and everything? That's, I'm that's sorry? Kind of relax. Is that kind of what you do for your downtime? Yeah. When you're, you yeah. know, that, that's relaxing for you? And yeah. Oh, very, yeah. It, it's, yeah, because it, it's so totally, obviously, so totally different from, from showbiz. And it's it's always been a hobby, but now it's even, it's more than a hobby even. I don't know. I can never remember the difference. Is, is it my vocation or avocation? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's I can't remember the difference. <laughs> yeah, really. But it's really? one of one of the others. So, um, you've done a million of these interviews over the years and I'm just wondering is there anything you would want to share with us that you haven't been asked before? Something Anything? Uh, I, you know, as you say, I've done so many. I, <clears throat> to be honest, you know, I, I can't remember the last time I was asked a question that that, that I hadn't heard before. Um, <clears throat> but um, uh, you know, it's it, like I said before. I'm I'm just I feel very blessed to have been part of the monkey thing, and to have done all the other things in my life. You know, I I kept busy and and touch wood. I will keep busy. I have no intention of retiring anytime soon. And I hope to see uh, everybody that's reading or listening to this uh, the interview to come out and catch the show when they get a chance. Well, we will, you know, definitely. I'm going to be there on the 19th and Excellent. I'm thrilled. I'm 
so excited. Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait. And um, I, I don't know. It's it's just um, it's, you've been a part of my life since I was in second grade. Okay, <laughs> you know, I'm right. one of the original Monkeys fans. Oh, and, great. You know, um, and how that turned out would would you know, became of what was just supposed to be a show that turned into this musical, I want to say miracle, because you guys were fantastic and it just took off and you became so much more than what it originally started out as. Well, you you, you hit the nail on the head. The Monkees was like a musical on TV. It was much more like the Marx Brothers than, say, the Beatles. Uh, usually it gets usually it gets compared to the Beatles, but it was much more like the Marx Brothers. In fact, it was John Lennon, the first one that I ever heard make the comparison. You know, he said, I like the monkeys, I like the Marx Brothers. And that's much more accurate. The Monkees was a television show about this uh, imaginary rock and roll group. Uh, and uh, we eventually went on the road and played and performed. Uh, that was the intention. You know what's come along recently, the closest thing I can think of is something like Glee, where it's a show about an imaginary Glee club, but they can all do it. They can sing and dance and act and, and play. And I've heard that they went on the road uh, also and performed live. So it's, you know, but back in the 60s, of course, 1966, nothing like that had ever happened. No, you, there, that was uh, completely new. And the idea of um, the music videos for MTV must have originated from watching Monkeys episodes. Well, I'd like to think I'd like to think we had something to do with it. We didn't call them music videos. Uh, there was no MTV. They were just ways of getting the music onto the television show. We called them romps. The director oh. would say, "Okay, now we're going to do the romp," and it was a way of uh, of getting footage to go behind the new song that week. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really interesting, and like my kids grew up with the monkeys because I played them all the time, and I will see you on the nineteenth. Please and come and introduce yourself. I will. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.